Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. This video, I'm going to make a remastering of an earlier video that I've made, and I hope I could improve it relying on my rough drafts that I've drawn for this character. This is going to be a remastering of the story of Madame Shear, the first anything that I've made in my Leviathan universe. And if you guys could bear with me, I will reintroduce her story to you guys, alongside having the rough drafts being edited in post and such. And I'll try all that I can to make this work for you guys. Here it is. Madame Shear, number one. The beginning. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, July 11, 2015. In the beginning of this story, we start traveling across an autumn New York in 1987, where we find ourselves observing a small apartment room where a married couple and their four-year-old daughter was watching some documentaries about the past wars that the United States was going through. This story is particularly about the daughter. Her name is Kimberly Elinda Blader. Daddy, Daddy! Kimberly said. Please turn it up a little. And he increased the volume of the television of the time period. Most would expect a little girl to be watching cartoons like most other kids. But for Kim, however, she was fully fascinated with American war movies. Now we flash forward into the 21st century, where Kim had grown up and decided that in order to protect her friends, family, and country, she would be best at making futuristic weapons for future battles. By adulthood, Kim now has luscious black hair, brown eyes, and a high IQ number from all the engineering skills that she learned in her past. In this scene, Kimberly had cut the red ribbon to declare the birth of her home and workplace, Blader Tech Tower, which is easily recognized by a series of metallic shards lined up around the disc-shaped scalp of the building. After that, Dr. Blader had created the official security system of the tower, which she had since named Maya, or Major Assistance on Yearly Advancements. But eventually, things would end up changing Kim's life forever. After a few months of the dedication, Kim was working in her main lab until she started hearing a hard slamming on her laboratory door, and a group of Mexican gangsters burst in and started invading the lab with their master, a Mexican gang lord named Ferdinand Savage, or simply Boss Savage, followed behind them. Blader, he yelled. Why wouldn't it ever occur to you to give us some weapons? And Kim simply replies, This is the 20th time. You've got to pay for them with your own money. This reply had completely offended Savage. Well then, Dr. Blader, looks like we have to get them the hard way. He then snaps his fingers on his right hand, and the gangsters started throttling her with baseball bats and knives, making her partially disoriented and leaving two cut marks on her face. After doing that, Savage commands his gang to steal some plasma cannons, and before they left, one of the members stuck a bomb onto a wall for 15 seconds. The last thing that Kimberly knew was the sound of a beeping and a deafening explosion, and from that point on, she was never again the same. She then got awakened by the fluorescent lights from the ceiling and found herself lying on a metal gurney when Maya appeared and started telling her some life-changing news. Dr. Blader, she began, I am horribly sorry, but you need to know something. Kim then got mostly awakened and says, What exactly happened? Or do I not want to know? Maya then continued, the explosion had almost destroyed the entire lab and amputated you from the elbow down on both arms, and I did the best option possible for you to survive. Blader then bent up and found that she now has metallic blades for hands. Each hand possessed five blades for fingers ranged in different lengths. Although they were identical, she also found that each blade had inner joints that bend like normal fingers. She gasped. Why would this ever happen? She asked Maya. 
Like I already mentioned, this is the best plan that I could figure out for you, sir. After a few hours, Kimberly trained herself on how to use her new hands, and she then realized something. If I have these blades that can leave permanent scars for best case scenario, then I should use it to protect people. She then asked Maya, where's the best option for me to learn some fighting skills? And Maya replied, through the global examination, I say that the best person to teach you is a martial arts instructor found in the jungles of China. She's known as Sight, and she proclaims to be one of the best fighting instructors on the planet. Okay then, Maya. Please transport me there. Through a special teleporter in her lab, Kimberly had found herself climbing the oriental steps to a Chinese lair that appeared to be isolated, due to the severe number of vines and bamboo lined all across it. After she got in, Kim started yelling out, Hello? Is anyone here? I would like to learn how to fight my enemies. Suddenly, she saw that a young Chinese woman wearing a tan oriental robe had appeared to her. She is carrying a quarter staff that seemed to be more like iron than wood in terms of durability, and she is also wearing a silver headband that fully covered her eyes. Are you what they call sight? Kimberly asked her. Yes. I am Sight, but my real name is Susie Long. I was born with a condition that made me blind for life, and many people bullied me for it. From that point, I decided to fight back and become a martial arts instructor for anyone who needs training. She then reached out her left hand. Can I feel your presence? And Kim replied, I don't know, I might cut you. I'll be careful. And Susie starts rubbing her hands onto hers gently. What is your name? Sight asked her. I am Dr. Kimberly Blader. And she finally answered, Well, Kimberly, you're now allowed to be a student for the art of combat. After a few weeks of training, Kimberly found that she now has the agility, speed, and fighting potential of a common ninja. In her last battle in training, Sight finally announces, Congrats, Kimberly. You are now a highly qualified fighter. Enjoy your time in future battles. Thank you very much, Susie, Kim finally replies. Meanwhile, during a night in a warehouse in New York, Boss Savage was telling his gang his new plan that involves using the stolen weapons to mark a disaster upon the city. Suddenly, they started to notice something moving in the shadows. It then walked up to the lights and revealed itself to be Kimberly. She is now wearing a bulletproof latex suit, and she has her hands hiding behind her back. Will we meet again, sissy? Did you get so knocked out you forgot what happened? Savage said as his crew started laughing at her. This outraged her to yell at them, saying, Say that to my blades, you losers! And she exposed her hands making the gangsters gasp in shock. Try to fight me, Nimrods. They now started attacking her. But her blades were slashing the gangsters one by one, with their blood gushing out of every cut. And she was so agile that they were unable to catch up with her. Boss Savage then tried to throttle Kim with a metal pipe, but she kept dodging his attacks and did a dragon kick that launched him onto a concrete wall. Losing his nerve, he tried to sprint at her to stalk her face, and she ducked under the punch and gave him a series of stabs to his torso. Moaning in pain, Savage fell to his knees, when Kimberly finally said, How do you like me now, bozo? And she did a slapping slash across his face, knocking him out. After that happened, the New York Police Department showed up to find that the gangsters were either killed from hemorrhaging or more dead than alive. A month later, Boss Savage was sentenced to six life sentences in prison, and the mayor of New York City, Mayor Dales, made a ceremony to celebrate Kim's first victory. Dr. Kimberly Elinda Blader is such a fine woman who truly knows how to do things right for her friends, and I announce that she will now have a solid gold medal for her success and she places the medal around Kim's neck and decides to hug her instead of giving her a handshake in order to avoid getting scarred. Mayor Dales then continued by saying, 
Well, Dr. Blader, do you have anything you'd like to say to the Big Apple? And she finally revealed, Well, everyone, I've decided to focus the rest of my life fighting crime as frequently and successfully as possible for all of you. And the crowd cheered for her. And for now on, ladies and gentlemen, just call me by the name Madam Shear, she finally says, linking to the local news camera. And that moment was placed right on the front cover of the national newspaper, which simply reads in fine print, Madam Shear, the bladed genius. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the story, and I hope it's all worth it for you guys in the long run. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below and share if you want. It's your choice. And hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and so far. And, and as far as I know, in transmission.